that. I have a secret for you. Shall I whisper it to you? Well, I'm going to give you guys tonight some pure Neville Goddard. This stuff goes back to the ancients, guys. This stuff goes back to the Kibalion. The carnal mind or the left brain is like a woman. Mm. And you will be fusing your imaginations, guys. You will be fusing your consciousness together. And in this reality, on this film roll, that's going to create a power punch. First of all, what does a robot sound like? It's not going to sound like I am now living an 1800 East Street peacefully and easily. No. And I've been doing this for a few years independently without even really consciously thinking about this. But I want to tie it down to our longest uh, prototypal traditions, and that is the monastic traditions. I am now living in 1800 East Street in an easy way. Sure. God, if you look at the primordial meditation of uh, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmani Ar-Rahim Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Javier with the real Javier Novoa 2.0 a channel, a platform, and a modality where we apply the principles of interiorism to living free, guys. And I'm excited to revisit a topic that, of course, has just been taking off on the channel. It's been taking off on a lot of platforms. It is being seen as one of the most powerful tools in manifesting, in law of assumption, in even, indeed interiorism, and that is, guys, robotic affirming. We're going to continue to return to this. In fact, guys, I haven't really shared it on the channel, but over just the past few weeks and months, I've had some huge personal and business breakthroughs just by using the tool of robotic affirming. And I believe that tool is extremely powerful, and we went into why it was so powerful in the videos that we made in the past on this channel. You can check it out, including the master class that I did in robotic affirming, where we went deep and we went philosophical. We're not going to get as deep and philosophical in this video, but what we are going to do is I'm going to put out a video in the next few days about an actual process and schedule, if you feel like using it. If it resonates with you, I'm going to show you the process and the schedule that I used that I was able to work into my life with robotic affirming to just give me incredible results. Results that are going to take your breath away, ladies and gentlemen. So, very quickly, this video is going to touch on an aspect of robotic affirming due to a question from a subscriber. But I just want to go back to what is robotic affirming very simply. And without getting really philosophical, I want to go into Neville Goddard. I'm going to give you guys tonight some pure Neville Goddard. And I want to go into why speech in general is such a powerful tool. Because you see, speech, thought, and imagining are two sides of this coin. And in fact, it's what Neville Goddard called the coin of heaven. And it's in fact a chapter in one of his books. And I just want to find it here just so that I can read to you why speech is a part of that coin, ladies and gentlemen. And it's in his book, Awakened Imagination. Just very quickly, because this stuff goes back to the ancients, guys. This stuff goes back to the Kibalion and other books. So he says, learn to relate the happenings around you to inner speech and you will become self-taught. He also says, 
in the beginning was the Word. And I want to read to you basically the most powerful aspect of this when he talks about the coin of heaven. He says, It is only what is done now that counts. That goes into the power of now. That now is your greatest power, as Bashar always says, and as Seth always said. The present moment does not recede into the past. It advances into the future to confront us, spent or invested. Thought is the coin of heaven. Money is its earthly symbol. Every moment must be invested, and our inner talking reveals whether we are spending or investing. And a little further in the Bible, God says, My word shall not return unto me void, and it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And of course, Hermes said, The word is son, and the mind is father of the word. They are not separate from, from one another, for life is the union of the word and the mind. The whole manifested world goes to show us what use we have made of the word, inner speech. An uncritical observation of our inner talking will reveal to us the ideas from which we view the world. Inner talking mirrors our imagination, and our imagination mirrors the state with which it is fused. If the state with which we are fused is the cause of the phenomenon of our life, then we are relieved of the burden of wondering what to do, for we have no alternative but to identify ourselves with our aim. And basically it's this, guys, making it very, very simple. You see, the carnal mind or the left brain is like a woman, as Neville Goddard says in other passages. It works only with persuasion, so it needs to be persuaded. So by inner speech and inner talking, it's getting dark already, guys, but by inner speech, and that light's not even helping, by inner speech and inner talking, you are basically convincing your mind. You're persuading that woman. Now, we don't want to try to get too caught up in trying to do it. Trying to do anything is going to counteract it. But what we want to know is by speech we're persuading it. Robotic affirming is the most powerful form of persuading, I believe. And it's worked in my life. I've seen it. Why is that? because your conscious mind is not getting in the way and you're not wondering, am I doing it right? And so many clients and commentators and questioners on this channel are constantly asking, am I doing it right? So with robotic affirming, there's no doing it wrong because you're not supposed to even try to believe what you're saying. You're simply making an affirmation. Say, I am now making $200,000 a year and you're not to try to believe it. Now, going to a question that I received on our robotic affirming masterclass, I received a question from a commenter over the last few days, and she asked, can this be done by couples? And doing this stuff with couples is one of the most powerful ways to do this. Yes, you can do it in couples, and it's a beautiful thing to be able to do this in couples. But the only problem is, the only issue is, remember, as Abraham Hicks says, you cannot influence anything else by setting out to influence them. In fact, Neville Goddard says this. That's the first aspect you have to realize about this. Neville Goddard said, if our, we will influence people by our imagination, of course, because it changes the entire scenery, it changes our entire world. But we cannot set out to do that, because then it will be, as Neville said, tyranny. And here's an aspect that I've learned from my channel, and that many content creators that I know, friends of mine, have also told me. It's a lonely road, guys, and so this is stemming from the first question you have to ask. The first question you have to ask if you're trying to do this as a couple it's not can it be done, because it can be very powerfully done. And here in a second, when I get back home, I'm actually going to read from Neville Goddard about this. Pure Neville Goddard, guys. It can be done, but the question is, is your partner receptive? And it's highly unlikely that your partner is going to be completely receptive. 
if you have found someone who is totally and completely receptive to interiorism, to this work, to the fact that the imaginal and the interior is actually more real than the exterior, then you have a gem and that's a beautiful thing and your coming together will be much more powerful. If your partner is not convinced, most of the time you're doing this, you're gonna be dealing with skepticism and you're going to be trying to convince your partner and that's actually going to detract from the power of this modality. In that case, I'd recommend not even trying to bring your partner aboard. Don't try to influence your partner. And like I said, I've been talking with other content creators. My partner, my immediately family, some people subscribe to the channel, watch a few videos, but they're not into this, guys. Nobody in my family supports me in this work, and, it's a lot, and most content creators that I know are not supported. And in the biblical scripture, Jesus said, a prophet is never accepted in his own country. Because the people that are around you every day, there's a, st a saying, familiarity breeds contempt. They're probably not going to listen to you guys. How many of you, your kids, listen to your advice? Maybe when they get older and wiser. But right now, it's highly unlikely they're going to listen to you. It's highly unlikely if your spouse is skeptical of this, that you're going to convince him or her. So that's the first question. If you've got your spouse aboard, again, that's a beautiful thing. And now I'm going to briefly explain to you with the teachings of Neville how to do this how to make it to where both of you are co-creating, and that is a beautiful relationship. I am waiting on wings at Wingstop. I'm gonna grab those, we're gonna eat, I'm gonna go home, and we're gonna continue with this conversation on manifesting as couples, and specifically on robotic affirming as couples. Don't go away, I'll be right back. See, here we are in Wingstop. I just came for a little Wingstop run. Couldn't resist it today, so of course it's here. Thanks, man. Alright. Back home with this stuff. Look at this great dinner, guys. We're about to dig into that, then we'll be back. Mmm. This is good stuff. So guys, I'm back. We had this great meal. I'm relaxed. I hope you had a great meal. If you haven't had a meal, do it, make yourself comfortable, because we're gonna come after this, this robotic affirming topic from a perspective I think you won't have heard before on other YouTube videos. I have a couple of secrets for you, a couple of keys, and if you'll follow me, I believe that this can supercharge your robotic affirming. Again, we're making more videos about it. I'm gonna be giving you specific frameworks and modalities to do it but today we're talking from the point of view of a couple and again first you need to determine is your significant other on board and if they're not that's fine because everything I'm going to say guys is going to apply to you whether you're in a couple or not why is that I have a secret for you shall I whisper it to you well Jesus said in the biblical scriptures, and we'll be drawing from that a bit today, because all of the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, all of the religions, all of the spiritualities, if you haven't figured it out yet, they're all pointing to the same reality, and they're all drawing upon this human slash divine perennial philosophy that runs through all humanity, just speaking to different people at different times in ways that they can understand, but... Jesus said, when two or three agree in my name, then it is done. And of course, we're paraphrasing something like this, right? And that doesn't mean two or three people. As Neville Goddard said, you don't need anyone. All is one, and you are the all in the one. That's the secret. So the little secret is, the two or three are within you. And what it means is, the right brain and the left brain... And then that super mind, or the one that knows he is the one, the observer. And of course, you can do that within you. You don't need the support of anyone else. But you will influence others. So, 
I'm just going to take a tiny detour into how you can do this if your spouse is not in agreement with you. And again, I'm going to be drawing heavily today on Neville Goddard. We're going to be going into some pure Neville Goddard. A lot of the Neville Goddard purists on Reddit and on YouTube are going to like this because I am going straight to the repository of teachings of Neville Goddard. So, if you read his book, The Law and the Promise, which is probably my favorite book of Neville Goddard, where he talks about testimonies, he gets into the nitty-gritty here. And there's a store, a story, there's a story where a wife knows this stuff, but of course her husband doesn't. As we said before we ate, a prophet is never accepted in his or her own country. Oft times, one of the spouses will be deeply into reality creation, will know who they are, and the other spouse will have nothing of it. They'll just say, oh, that other spouse is quirky, and usually they won't listen to that spouse. Usually it takes someone outside of the house to convince the spouse of something. So if any of your family members are having trouble with you espousing these teachings, pass them on my videos. Maybe they'll listen to someone outside the family, but that's another story. So this lady wanted a house in the end. And here's how she did it. I want to read this from The Law and the Promise. She said, A few months ago, my husband decided to place our home on the market. The main object for the move, which we had discussed many times, was to find a home large enough for the two of us, my mother and my aunt, in addition to ten cats. This is a cat lady, I guess. Three dogs and one parakeet. Believe it or not, the contemplated move was my husband's idea. He loved my mother and aunt and said that I was at their house most of the time anyway, so why not just live together and pay one tax bill? I liked the idea tremendously. But I knew that this new home uh, would have to be something very special in size, location, arrangement, as I insisted on privacy for all concerned. So at the moment, I was undecided whether to sell our present home or not. And I didn't argue, as I knew quite well from past experience with imagining that our house would never sell until I stopped sleeping in it. So basically, a few months later, her husband did something with brokers. I, I want to cut this short a little bit. <clears throat> she didn't really want to sell it, and it didn't sell. So finally, on the fifth day, she said my, she had convinced herself that she now wanted the change. So for four nights, in my imagination, she says... I went to sleep in the kind of home I would like to own. On the fifth day, my husband had an appointment at a friend's home, and while there, met a stranger who just happened to be looking for a house in the hills. He was, of course, brought swiftly back to see our house with which he walked through once and said, I'll buy it. This didn't make us very popular with the brokers, but that was all right with me, as I was happy to keep the broker's commission in the family. We moved within 10 days and stayed with my mother. She talked about that it was hard for them to get it, and so basically what she did was they found a house that they wanted. I'm going to paraphrase this to make it shorter, which was basically a house in the British style, a very beautiful house. And here's what she did when they went and they visited, and uh, she saw her husband enjoy the house. She said, before we left, I walked through that magnificent living room, once more going up the stairs to the dining room balcony. I turned and looking down, saw my husband standing by the fireplace. See, guys, imagining in words, as we explained in the previous videos on robotic affirming, are not different. They're both the coin of heaven. Let's say your affirmation is, I'm making $200,000 a year. You can imagine yourself receiving a check for $200,000 a year, or you can say, I'm now making $200,000 a year. Both of those require a little bit of focus and eventually belief, but the speech is going to be easier, especially for those who are not so much visual. And in this age, we have a lot of people who say they're not visual. And it's going to help anchor you. Because in imagination, your mind can go all over the place. But with you, when you have a word and a mantra, and this is what ancient people and monks and so on figured out. We're going to be coming back to this later, guys. Monks are a great paradigm. It's not something that's necessary, but I have studied monasticism since my teens. People who renounce the world and go and live in monasteries. It is not a literal necessity, 
but it is a, shall we say, paradigm, or there's another word I'm looking for. It is a prototype. That's the word we're looking for. Fritz Joff Schuon talked about prototypes. They're basically figures which stand and symbolize a certain state. And monastics and people who are living in monasteries symbolize certain states. And that's a state of focus. That's a state of austerity, which means austerity from focusing on what is. And so they've come up with a lot of good things, guys, and we'll talk about this a little bit here in a second. But the word anchors you. So as you're looking at her imaginal acts, think about the words also that could be used and are being used written on the page. So before we left, I walked through the magnificent living room. I turned, looking down, saw my husband standing by the fireplace, pipe in hand, with an expression of perfect satisfaction on his face. I placed my hands on the balcony railing and watched him for a moment. When we went back to the real estate office, the three agents were ready to close for the day, but my husband detained them, saying, let's make her an offer anyway. Maybe she'll split the property, the owner. What can we lose? One agent left the office without the word. Another said the idea is ridiculous. The agent we had originally talked to said, forget it, it's a pipe dream. My husband is not easily annoyed, but when he is, there's no more stubborn creature on earth. He was now annoyed. He sat down and slammed his hand on the desk and roared, it's your business to submit offers, isn't it? They agreed that this was so and finally promised to submit our offer on the property. We left, and that night, in my imagination, she says, I stood on that dining room balcony and looked down at my husband standing by the fireplace. He looked up and said, well, honey, how do you like our new home? I said, I love it. I continued to see that beautiful room and my husband in it and felt the balcony railing gripped in my hands until I fell asleep. The next day we were having dinner, she said, and they were called and informed that the property was indeed sold and the owner had agreed to split it. So she did this without any influence. So you can do this alone, and indeed you can do everything that I'm advising alone. But if you can do it in a couple, again, you're now in community, and you now have that much more focal power. And I want to read a story from the same book, from the same chapter, about sort of how to do this. Then I'm going to give you my technique to do it, and I'm going to give you a key, guys. I'm going to give you a key that's going to revolutionize you're robotic affirming whether it's in couples or alone. So, Neville Goddard says in his book, talking about a doctor and his wife, he said they dreamed about their stately habitation, but not until they imaginatively lived in it, lived in it within, through affirming, through imagination, did they manifest it. This is a couple, guys. Here's their story. Some 15 years ago, Mrs. M and I purchased a lot on which we built a two-story building housing our office and living area. We've left ample space on the lot for an apartment building if and when our finances would permit. All those years, we were busy paying off our mortgage and at the end of that time had no money for the additional building we still desired so much. So, of course, like most of us, they had no money and resources in the now, in the material world. So what did they do? It was true that we had an ample savings account, which meant security for our business, but to use any part of it for a new building would be to jeopardize that security. No, you have to use everything that you have, and you have to go out there and work hard and use it. Oh, no, no. We're teaching something different here on The Real Javier Novo and Interiorism. You can have it completely your way. You can say, you know what? I want to use little money. I want to use no money. You have it your way. Why? Because you are the one. So, but now you're teaching Awaken the new concept, boldly telling us that we could have what we most desired through the controlled use of our imagination. Read affirming here, or robotic affirming. And that realizing a desire was made more convincing without money. We decided to put it to the test to forget about money and concentrate our attention on the thing we desired most in this world, the new apartment building. With this principle in mind, we mentally constructed the new building as we wanted it, actually drawing physical plans so we could better formulate our mental picture of the completed structure, actually writing out affirmations so that we could have a mental structure. Think about this. 
The plan is an affirmation, just in pictures instead of words. Never forgetting to think from the end, in our case, the completed occupied building, we took many imaginative trips through our apartment house, renting the units to imaginary tenants, examining in detail every room, and enjoying the feeling of pride as friends offered congratulations on the unique planning. We brought into our imaginal scene one friend in particular, I shall call her Miss X, a lady we had not seen for some time as she had given up on us socially, believing us a bit peculiar in our new way of thinking. In our imaginal scene, we took her through the building and asked how she liked it. Hearing her voice distinctly, we heard her reply, Doctor, I think is beautiful. They did it together, guys. Here, That's the point of the story. And of course, they got the house, they got the apartment building. Basically, a guy came, I want to cut this short, but a guy came and offered her uh, offered them to build it for them, but they needed to pay money, and they ignored him, and then finally he said he'd finance it, and so on and so forth. They got what they want, but they were imagining together. That's proof, I think, enough from Neville that we can do it together, guys, and of course you'll have to prove this for yourself. In another story, in another book of Neville Goddard, I remember he spoke about a, a lady who had her watch stolen, and basically her husband took the imaginary watch and passed it to her, and then she put it in her box or something like that. And this was also something done as a couple. How do we do robotic affirming as a couple? Well, I want to focus our attention, first of all, on the fact of monasteries and monks, because monasteries and monks represent sort of a family community. And what do they do? Especially, and I want to speak about the Tibetan and Buddhist monks and the Christian Orthodox monks, because these are the true monks, and they basically trace back to the ancient monastic wisdom, even during paganism. So what do Orthodox monks, and I believe Buddhist monks as well, do? When they eat, they eat in silence, and one of the monks will go up, and I know in the Orthodox tradition they will read from the lives of the saints, and the monks will be silent and they will hear that. That is a model for how to do robotic affirming. It's very simple. First of all, you as a couple want to come up with a statement that you can robotically affirm together as a couple. Let's say you want a house, and you know where the house is. Let's say it's on 1800 East Avenue to make a fictitious house. You can say we... Because you're a couple now, you can make the affirmation, we are now living peacefully and easily at 1800 First Avenue. We are now living peacefully at 1800 East Avenue, or whatever avenue we said. And now, you get together for a certain period of time. It need not be extreme or exaggerated. I'd say 15 to 30 minutes is enough st starting out. And in one session, you can have one of the couple read it. And in another session, you can have another of the couple read it. And that's it, guys. Do this as a couple, and you will be fusing your imaginations, guys. You will be fusing your consciousness together. And in this reality, on this film roll, that's going to create a power punch. But now I want to give you just one insight. And I do this individually. And I'd recommend that couples do this individually with your affirmation. Making it robotic. What is a ro First of all, what does a robot sound like? It's not going to sound like I am now living in 1800 East Street peacefully and easily. No. It's got to sound something like this. I am now living at 1800 East Street peacefully and easily. Now, for those of you who have ever listened to Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditations, what does he do in a lot of his meditations? There is empty space. It sounds like a robot. And what is this robotic sound? What's another name for it, guys? And I've been doing this for a few years independently without even really consciously thinking about this. But I want to tie it down to our longest uh, prototypal Traditions, and that is the monastic traditions. Look at these monks, for example, in a Buddhist monastery.
also look at these orthodox months. Listen to this beautiful vibration. Now, what's the commonality in all these monastic communities? There is chant, guys. And I never see anyone talking about this. On your own, it's powerful. In a couple, it's going to be even more powerful. Chant your affirmations, guys. That's one of the secrets to my success. Why? Because the chanting, like a song, like a poem, it crowds out the other thoughts and it actually takes root in your brain. Think about it. I am now living on 1800 East Street in Easy Way. I am now living in 1800 East Street in an Easy Way. I am now living in 1800 East Street in an Easy Way. Guys, the very vibration. If you look at the primordial meditation of... How your body feels guys that actually releases a chemical in your brain look at the islamic tradition alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-rahman ar-rahim maliki yawm ad-deen iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een they recite the quran like this Again, look at the Orthodox, the way they recite the Bible. It's all a chant. So the chant anchors it in your body. It anchors it in your memory. And it anchors it in your thoughts. If you will do this, guys, I promise you, you're going to supercharge the power of these robotic affirmations. So that's my one advice for you. Chant your affirmations as a couple if they're open to it. Yes, you can do your robotic affirmations as a couple. And it's a chance to come together and practice this chanting, which will have not only effect upon you, upon the entire vibration of your environment, upon the other person. And it will bring what you want to you in this film role quicker than you ever thought possible. So just a little advice on that. And we're going to be making more videos on this. I hope you enjoyed this video on robotic affirming. Guys, if you find value in this material, please do hit the subscribe button below. Help us grow. Help us get this word out. And I am doing coaching calls. I will put my email in the description. We will have a dynamic consultative relationship that will take your manifesting and that will take your living free to the next level. So until very soon, guys, with much love and appreciation, this is Javier with The Real Javier Novoa, bidding you a wonderful rest of the week. See you soon.